Hello and welcome to Rathors IS. Today in this video, we are going to see current fights of 20th August 2023. So first we are going to see brief introduction regarding the topics and later on we are going to see detailed analysis of topics and apart from that, we are also going to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF at last. So only like 10 to 11 days are left. So we are thinking for an alternative to come up with a Hindu news analysis soon because from September 1st onwards there is no option of download from Hindu e-paper website. Okay, so I am also going to give you an update regarding so how we are going to discuss Hindu future. Okay, so we are trying to get a best alternative. So now let us try to see the first topic. So before that I want to let you know that so we are thinking that we are going to come on live of this Hindu analysis every day. So we are planning from morning 8 o'clock uh, till 9.30 so between these time. So let me know the suitable time for the starting of this live sessions also. So it should be between 8 to 9.30 am. So please let me know so which time is suitable for you and me uh, to conduct this live classes. So I am thinking that uh, this time which is suitable for me is morning 8 to 9.30. So please let me know your opinion and please give me some suggestions regarding the live. Okay. And the first topic it is about Prime Minister seeks a secure digital economy. So here the key word is you have to focus on this digital economy. So after this uh, Prime Minister came into power that is Narendra Modi ji came into power. He came with lot of initiatives regarding the digitalization, regarding the skill India, right? Regarding promotion of inclusive economy. So all these things they were focused by the present government. So here our pres uh, Prime Minister is saying that we have to secure digital economy. So here you have to focus on this keyword digital economy. So here you have to understand what exactly is this digital economy. And apart from that you have to see what are the advantages, right? So apart from this, yes you have to understand what are the initiatives came up by the government, government initiatives to promote digital economy or inclusive economy. Okay, so these are the things you have to know. So first one is this digital economy kya hai? So iska matlab kya hai? So first one. And next one is what are the advantages? So benefits kya hai? And next one is so government kya kya ab tak? Okay, that means so what are the initiatives came up by the government to promote inclusive economy, to promote digital economy. So all these things you have to know. And this topic is important from your economy which comes in the GS paper 3. And next one it is about raptors. So raptors make power towards their home. So raptors they are certain species of birds. So they belong to birds. So where these birds they will normally live in the nest. So this nest will be there on the trees etc. Right. But here especially in the coastal area. So we do not have proper trees on the beaches. Am I correct? So here what happened now the raptors which are present in this coastal area they are making their nesting sites on the power towers. So if you are talking about that power towers so they will be carrying so you, it will be like this right. So this will be power towers and they will be carrying high tension voltage current. So whenever these birds they are keeping nests on these towers means so they will be have some impact on this um, impact because of this flowing current in that wires. So this is one cause of concern here. So here what exactly you need to know. So you need to know this raptors kya hai. So raptors ka matlab kya hai. So kaun sa birds hai. And next one is you have to see what is the significance. So what are the ecological services provided by this raptors. So what is their role in the food chain. Right. So this thing that you have to remember and this topic is important from your environment and ecology which comes in the GS paper 3. And next one is G20, G20 countries to strengthen global health architecture. So this article is focusing on this G20 and especially in this G20 summit they are focusing on strengthening of global health infrastructure or architecture. So for that we came up with this uh, focusing on digital health. So already we saw introduction regarding this topic in yesterday's lecture. So but let us dig deep into this topic in this today's lecture. 
and this topic is important from your IR and even from your health point of view. So both will come under your GS paper too. So this is an interconnected topic or interlinking topic. And next one is a possible solution. So this article which is talking about microplastics. So microplastic means nothing but. So in every one's house we are using plastic. For example, mugs, for example, buckets, everything, even plastic covers, etc. So after once their use is over, so we are throwing it out. Correct? So <laughs> especially plastic mugs, plastic buckets, which are used in our bathroom. So we will be throwing here and there. Even plastic utensils that we are using in our kitchen also, so we are throwing everywhere. So especially women, they know about the usage of plastic in the kitchen. And what happened after some days, if you keep one plastic uh, bag or plastic jug on your terrace, so after some days, after some months, what happens? So it will become very brittle. So if you touch that, it will be broken up. So it will be broken up into small pieces. So this small piece of plastic, which is less than 5 mm, okay, they are called as microplastic. So this article is talking about how can we address this issue of microplastic by using tannins. By using tannins. So what is this tannin? So tannin is nothing but in some trees. So these are the alkalides which are produced. For example, you can see, for example, if you see in the neem tree, so if you are causing any injury to neem tree, so after some time what happened water will be coming out of that and later on that will come that will be hardened into the gum so in the same way these are nothing but tannins okay so these tannins they can be used to trap microplastic so this is the idea regarding this topic and this topic is important from your environment and ecology and even science and technology this environment and ecology and even science and technology they comes under the same paper that is gs paper 3 and next topic is warming induced glacier retreat could create novel ecosystems. Yes, already you know that due to this climate change. So climate change ke wajay se kya impacts hai? So we are facing lot of impacts of this climate change. So one such a great impact is melting of glaciers. So glaciers are melting ho raha hai. Melting ho raha hai that too at a faster pace. So why? Because of increasing of global temperature or global warming. So global warming is one of the impact of climate change. So because of increasing temperature normally ice will melt, right? So if you are taking the ice cubes uh, from the fridge and if you are placing it outside, what happened after some time? So this ice will be converted into water. So in the same way, if you are not maintaining the temperature, so if there is increased temperature or rise in temperature, automatically the glaciers are present. For example, per se in Himalayas and the polar regions, so they will start melting. So because of melting, what happened? That will lead to increasing of sea level. That is also called as sea level rise. And all the seas, they are interconnected. All the seas, they are interconnected. So because of this, what happens? Yes. So in one area, whenever there is increasing of sea level rise, Automatically the water will be flown because of oceanic currents. Are you connecting the points? Yes. So because of this what happened? There will be increasing of water rise almost everywhere. Especially people who are living in this low lying areas or coastal areas and even small islands in oceans. So they will be very vulnerable. So this article is about this topic and this topic is especially saying that so because of this climate change so now glaciers is going to melt and because of that what happened we can see there will be there will be creation of new ecosystems new 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 or novel or novel or new ecosystems so we don't know the characteristics of that ecosystem because it will be very new sometimes it will be also leads to the rise of invasive species also right so this is about this topic and these are the topics now we are going to see in this lecture. So please don't skip the video. So watch from first to last so that you will be getting a lot of points and you can understand the points and you can connect the dots. Okay and please try to do the homework whenever I am giving so that will be helpful for you. And the students who are constantly trying to give comments like Neetu, Kavya, Nawaz 
and Aditya and user. So I congratulate you students. So please uh, rocking. So keep rocking and all the best for your preparation. Okay. The first topic is about Prime Minister seeks a secure digital economy. So this article is talking about digital economy. So this article is important from your GS paper 3 under your economy point of view. And even you can see this topic under governance because this, to this digital economy is also part of smart city mission. It's also the part of smart city mission. So now let us try to understand what are the statements given by our Prime Minister. So if you see the context, it says that the Digital India campaign, so this campaign launched in year 2014. So actually the present government came into power in 2014. So from 2015 onwards, there are a lot of innovative steps taken by the present government. And I can say because of this steps only India achieved the status of fifth largest economy in the world recently. So the Digital India campaign launched in 2015. So this Digital India campaign which aimed at creating greater national financial inclusivity. So we are focusing on inclusive government. So in this inclusive government or in this financial inclusivity or inclusive part, so everyone should become the part. So no one should be left. So this is the idea behind this inclusive economy. So here our Prime Minister, he spoke virtually in the meeting of G20 ministers of digital economy and he said that because of India's diversity. So if we're talking about diversity, so India it is a very huge country with diverse population, with diverse languages, with diverse regions, religions and ethnic groups are present and even people they are doing different works. Right. So because of this India's diversity, so this diversity it is a resource. And these resources which supports the testing and solution of the new digital products all over the world. And here our Prime Minister also said that this G20 it is high it is having the high level principles for a secure, trusted and resilient digital economy. So he also said that digital economy spreads globally and it will face security threats and challenges. So because of using of technology or because of increased use of technology, so on another side, we are also facing negatives like increased cyber security attacks, increasing of thefts, especially there is increased crimes regarding this uh, bank accounts and even there is a lot of money in the banks uh, which have been transferred because of lack of knowledge regarding the sharing of OTP like that. So because of this, our Prime Minister also made a note that because of increased technology, and because of increasing of digital economy, yes, now we are facing security threats and challenges. So in this context, it is important to build consensus on this G20 high level principles for a secure, trusted and resilient digital economy. So here in this context, our Prime Minister also said that infrastructure should cater to farmers. So here we have to provide infrastructure to the farmers and as well as small businesses and we need to create a framework of safe and responsible use of artificial intelligence also. So because of this artificial intelligence also, we are facing a lot of issues, right? So because of this artificial intelligence can also be used for a safe and responsible manner. So if you're talking about digital economy, so what exactly the meaning? So digital economy ka matlab kya hai? So digital economy is nothing but so it is a worldwide network. So it is a worldwide network of economic activities and commercial transactions and professional interactions. So it, this digital economy is nothing but it is a network. So network ka network of like economic activities. So economic activities ka or commercial activities ka or professional interactions ka worldwide network hai. So this is called as a digital economy. And actually this digital economy is also enabled by ICT, Information and Communication Technologies. And if you're talking about fourth IR, that is fourth industrial revolution. So this fourth industrial revolution is focusing on this digital economy. And sometimes this third industrial revolution is called as digital revolution because from this third industrial revolution itself, the changes happen in the late 20th century. But this fourth IR, that is fourth industrial revolution, 
which builds on digital revolution as technologies today they continue to bridge the physical and cyber worlds so what are the advantages of this uh, digital economy so digital economy ka advantage kya hai iska fayda kya hai so we're talking about advantages the first one is yes it will automatically improves the production or productivity so because of digital economy so automatically yes we can increase the productivity of business we can go for automating or increasing of use of technology in the operation as well as in the process also so that finally that will leads to increasing of production and next one is that will increases competitiveness so whenever one company is doing well means automatically another company in the same field they will be also coming up with some incentives they will be also coming up with adoption of technology and there will be the increased competition between the entities and this one needs it also leads to reducing of the cost so digitization has helped business to replace manual tasks with automated processes so this has reduced the cost of businesses and that will also lead to the lowering of price of the products so whenever there is reduced cost automatically the price of the cost price of that product will be also decreased for the customers so that we can increase the productivity and we can also increase the production levels also and that will also creates good demand in the market and next one is better and convenient products so because of this digitalized businesses so they can offer the customers better products and as well as services at a very lower prices and even new business models like e-commerce and m-commerce they have made it possible for customers to shop anytime at, at anywhere and even so this digital economy will also improves the employment opportunities so how so whenever the new business are coming up that is springing up automatically employment will be also created and new job roles will be also be created and finally because of uh, digital economy because of uh, using of technology that will also leads to improving of standard of living or the quality of life especially work life and as well as a personal life that can be balanced well and next one is easier transactions or the faster transactions so whenever we are using this uh, uh, digital transactions automatically we can go for faster transactions and now the payments can be done on online payment methods or online payment modes and this will also improve the efficiency so digitization of processes has helped business become more efficient by removing error, error prone manual task so here we are going to remove the errors when we are using this technology such that we can also improve efficiency and if you are talking about innovation so digitization of businesses and the processes that leads to innovation with respect to not just offerings but also the way the business operate so we can go for innovation as well and it will also leads to increase the transparency so the digital economy has increased the transparency of businesses okay because now we are using technology and we can easily share the information with the customers and also increase the communication also so increased connectedness will be seen here because of this digital economy so that we can communicate with the customers more efficiently or more effectively so here we are going to have the large number of channels such that we can reach the customers we can use social media platforms we can use emails sms etc to be stay connected with the customers so this is about this communication and if you talk me about what are the initiatives government took till now so first and the foremost thing here is government came with digi locker so digi locker ka matlab kya hai so here we can we can use a cloud based platform so either in this digi locker we can use this cloud based platform and in this platform we can exchange and we can verify essential documents or certificates and next one is my gov so this my gov launched in year 2014 so it mainly want to bring the government closer to the people by providing an interface that is online forum for the exchange of ideas and this one is government came up with this bharat net project so it is going to connect 2500 250000 gram panchayats in the country and this one is smart cities program came up by government in year 2015 
to transform all Indian cities into smart cities. And next one is we also came up with this digitization of post offices. And next one is the Pradhan Mantri Janana Yojana through which government started providing zero account, zero balance accounts for the people so that it will increase the inclusiveness. And next one is Digital India program. So these are the initiatives which came up by the government. And now let us see next topic it is about raptors. Raptors make power tower their home. So here you have to focus on what are these raptors. Raptors ka matlab kya hai? Kaun sa bird species ke andar aata hai? So these are the things that you have to know. And if you see this context, it says that white billed sea eagles. So these are eagles in India. So they are beginning to emulate. That means to uh, they are started building their nets, uh, their nest on the high tension wires. And these are present in Australia, India, Thailand, etc. So if you're talking about details, it says that the use of man-made structures as nesting sites, they can be both risky and beneficial to these coastal raptors. So these raptors, they mainly live in the coastal areas or coastal line. So what happened if you're talking about the coastal line of India, it is very, very high. It is more than 7,300 kilometers, right? So because of this, such a large, such a longest coastline that we are enjoying, so here the starters are mainly seen in this region but this coastal area which is devoid of or lack of trees is seen and even other nesting alternatives you are not finding. So because of this they started building their nest on this on this power transformers or in the, on this power lines right. So if you are talking about further more details so the nest of this white billed sea eagles they were found on power line towers. And they are about 2 kilometers away from the sea in Ramantapuram of Tamil Nadu. So these nesting sites, they were strategic for the birds to conveniently scan the marine area for food, the study which mainly said. So here this wide-billed sea eagle, it is a resident raptor. And this raptor belonging to the family, Asipitridae family. And this raptor which has a wide distribution range on the sea coast of India. That is from Mumbai to the eastern coast of Bangladesh. And Sri Lanka and southern Asia. Through all coastal south eastern Asia and as well as southern China to Australia. So in all these regions we can see there is a distribution of this raptor. And this raptor is being a least concern which is listed under IUCN red list. So now let us try to see what are some facts regarding these raptors. So raptors is a type of a bird of prey. So it is a carnivore that is it is a meat eater bird. So the bird which kill the prey and eats mammals, reptiles, amphibians, insects, rodents and even other birds. So they are having a hooked beak. Okay. Hooked beak with a strong feet and they will have excellent eyesight not like humans. And they are also carnivores, they will be uh, feeding on this carnivorous diet. So these are some important characteristics of these raptors. So what is the significance? So why we need to go for bothering about these raptors? So these raptors, they eat a wide variety of vertebrates. They are making long distance seed dissemination easier. And this boosts seed yield and as well as pest control it directly. And this one is predators at the top of the food chain, they are known as indicator species. And they will be indicating about the presence of pesticide, habitat loss, climate change, etc. And this one is Indonesia has a greater number of raptor species which is followed by Colombia, Ecuador and Peru. So which all comes under these raptors, for example, owls, vultures, hawks, falcons, eagles, kites, booties, accipiters, harriers. So they were comes and they normally comes into this this category of birds that is raptors. So this is about this topic and now let us try to see the next topic. Title says G20 countries to strengthen global health architecture. So this topic is important from your GS paper too. Under international relations under health. So this topic here you can expect prelims based question. From basic facts of G20 and here you can get analysis based question and this is important from your mains. So now let us try to see the context why this topic is in use. 
so here g20 health ministers the meeting had happened in gandhinagar and they came up with adoption of 23 point document okay so so 25 point so they came with uh, adoption of 25 point document so because of this this is the news and if you see the document details it says that the document released reaffirmed the commitment of g20 countries regarding the strengthening of global health architecture so this document is focusing on what strengthening of global health architecture and our union health minister he said that india's g20 presidency was carrying forward different discussions like they focused on need for adaptable affordable sustainable inclusive equitable access to the medical counter measures so all these things we that we focused as a presidentship of the g20 summit and he also said that countries also recognized the need for improving understanding the uh, for improving the healthcare and even for understanding the long covid 19 and how it had impact right at individual level at society level at economic level etc so what is the impact of this covid 19 so we have to understand that so based on that impact we can come with a better healthcare ecosystem so this is the thing which mainly said by our ministers and now let us try to see next topic it is about about digital health yes title says who managed grid to promote equitable access to digital health so this topic is important from gs paper to under health point of view and this topic is at most important from your international relations and also from your health point of view and this topic is important from your prelims okay so if you see context it says that health minister launched global initiative on digital health so health minister he launched global initiative on digital health it is a network managed by world health organization so health minister launched this global initiative on digital health and it is a network managed by world health organization so this is nothing but this article talking about global initiative on digital health that is gidh so what is this global initiative on digital health so this global initiative on digital health it is one of the key deliverables of india's g20 presidency so here under this global initiative on digital health so we are focusing on some important concepts the first one is we are focusing on data convergence so we have to collect the data and we have to analyze the data that is the data convergence and we are focusing on health platform interface and even global investments in the digital health and next one is a digital platform to include an investment tracker and we are focusing on ask tracker and library of existing digital health platforms and even we are focusing on innovations so innovations for what innovations to enhance universal health coverage and we have to focus on healthcare service delivery system also and we are also focusing on funding so funding from whom funding from global partners and we are also focusing on the data security so here we are collecting the data right so here we are focusing on data convergence so on another side yes we need to have this data security so we have to emphasize on the data security with india citizen centric data ownership policy so these are the some important key points of this initiative and if you are talking about this gidh so here we are focusing on four important pillars so first pillar here is country needs tracker country needs tracker because we are focusing on digital health investments and if one needs resource portal is also one of the important pillar so here we are focusing on traditional innovative resource opportunities we are enhancing transparency we are reducing the duplication risk and we are focusing on standards based analysis of resourcing gaps and this one is we are focusing on transformation toolbox so here we are focusing on quality assured tools we are focusing on resources and as well as empowering countries to manage national digital health transformation etc and here we are focusing on 
convening the knowledge exchange. So here we are promoting collaboration and here we are focusing on sharing of knowledge across global, regional and national digital health networks. So these are the four pillars. So here you can see those four pillars. So country needs tracker. Next one is resource portal. So it will be for resource optimization. Next one is transformation toolbox. And we need to focus on convening knowledge and exchange. Right. So these are some important four pillars. And now let us see next topic is about a possible solution. So this article is talking about microplastics. So recently there was one thing in news that even the human blood also. So there is a concentration of microplastic is seen. So you can understand this microplastic also became one of the part in our body now. So this topic is at most important. And here you have to know exactly what is this microplastic. Microplastic ka matlab kya hai? And uska impacts kya hai? So uska impacts kya hai? And you have to see what is the size of this microplastic. Kitta bada hai. So you have to know about this. And this topic is at most important from your environment and ecology and even from your science and technology. So if you see the context, it says that scientists at University of British Columbia's bioproducts. So they said that, yes, if you use the tannin, so we can trap this microplastics. So this is the idea because the tannins, they will be having very like uh, if you if you have uh, if you have any time uh, hold the any gel so it will be like that gel gel like thing so that it can create a filter and this traps microplastics so this is the idea so actually team analyze and microplastic which is released from the popular tea bags so these tea bags are made up of polypropylene and they found that their method they trapped about 95.2 percentage to as much as 99.9% .9 of plastic particles. So this is about this topic, right? So and they also found that if you are consuming that even in our organs also there will be the uh, accumulation of microplastic will happen, right? So microplastic it is a solution uh, to, uh, to address this problem of this microplastics. Uh, we are having the solution of using of the tannins. So what exactly are this microplastics? So microplastics are nothing but plastic debris. So they are formed after this integration of large plastic and size will be smaller than that of 5 mm. So why this uh, microplastics are very harmful? So first, first of all, it is, oh, it is uh, harmful for our environment because it will be causing pollution. For example, ocean pollution, plastic pollution impacts marine life, impacts ocean health, impacts ocean, coastal tourism and even that will be having negative impact on our human health also. So if you're talking about the plastic durability is very high. So if you take paper, so if you dissolve that paper in the water, automatically it will be like everything will be disintegrated, but it is not in the case of plastic. So if you're keeping plastic in a bucket of full of water for like one year also, so it will be like that only. So that will be durability will be very, very long. So it will take some years to decompose. But even though after decomposing also that will lead to the formation of microplastics. Okay. So over the past few years, various news reports, they have shown that marine animals such as whales, seabirds, turtles. So they are unknowingly ingesting these plastics and they are dying because of suffocation. And for humans, humans also marine plastic pollution is harmful if it reaches the food chain. For instance, microplastics, they have been found in tap water, even the beer and even the salt also. So because of this humans here, we are also going to be affected because of this microplastics. So till now, what are the measures taken by government? Yes, government took measures. For example, we came with endings. We came with the pledge that we have to end single use plastic by 2022. But how far we came up with that? So please give me your opinion like whether we ended the use of single use plastic or not. So give me some examples also. If yes, some examples. If no, some examples. So try to develop your own perspectives. And next one is all offices of central and state governments and major public sector undertakings. They have been told to prohibit single use plastic products. For example, straws. For example, plastic bags. And for example... Single use earbuds. Earbuds are very much famous examples, right? 
And next one is India has banned imports of solid plastic waste also. And even India came up with this plastic waste management tools 2016. And also under that government came up with this extended producer responsibility to cover the plastic to collect this plastic waste. So one more homework for you students is please let me know some important provisions under this plastic waste management rules 2016. So it is your homework don't forget to do this. And next topic is warming induced glacier retreat could create novel ecosystems. So warming induced glacier retreat could create novel ecosystems. So this topic is also very important. Okay, so this article is talking about climate change impact. So what is the impact of climate change in the near future? So we are going to have new novel ecosystems. So we don't know what will be the impact of that ecosystem still. So still the research is going on regarding this, how this novel ecosystem will be. Okay, so it is nothing but uh, climate change ki wajah se in future we are going to have new ecosystem okay naya ecosystem ban raha hai because of climate change so this is about this crux of the article so climate change caused by human activity under a high emission scenario so because of this what happened so because of this increasing of temperature so there will be the melting of glaciers so glaciers melting happens means what happened so if this is a glacier so this area which is covered by ice here so if this melting means what happens so this land will be get exposure this rock will be get exposure so that whenever this rock it is get exposure then what happened so the new ecosystem will start here the new ecosystem will going to start here so this is the idea right so actually if you see some details it says that this will have marked ecological and societal cascading consequences so we don't know whether it will be having positive impact or whether it is having negative impact right we have to do some complete analysis regarding how this new ecosystem it is going to be so we're talking about ecological impact so because of higher emission scenario a half of this 2020 glacier area which is going to be melted by 2100 year so by this 2100 year what happened so half of the present glacier is going to be melted and this could be curbed by so how can we curb this so when we are achieving this low carbon emissions or whenever we are achieving this net zero or carbon neutrality by 2050, then only at least for to some extent we can decrease this melting of glaciers. And it would mean that by 2100 year, so the decline of all glaciers outside Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets may produce new terrestrial, marine and freshwater ecosystem. So this ecosystem will be around the size of Nepal, around the size of Finland, like that. So if you're talking about what will be the climate scenarios. So in deglaciated areas, the new ecosystems, they will be characterized by extreme to mild ecological conditions. For example, we are going to have terrestrial, freshwater or marine habitats, etc. And there will be also some drastic changes that are going to be seen on our primary productivity. That will also lead to increase the number of non-native species and that can also thrive under certain conditions as cold adapted species and generalist species. So we are going to get some cold adapted species or generalist species that will also lead to increasing of invasive species also. So these are the some cause of concerns. So what is the need? The need here is we need to take some urgent steps. So we need to enhance climate change mitigation. And we have to focus on in situ protection also such that we can at least save our ecosystem or we can save our glaciers. So these glaciers are the, are the huge resource of our fresh water, right? Okay, so we have the responsibility to address this climate change from individual level. Okay, so this is about this topic. And these are some important articles that happen in our today's Hindu newspaper. So now I want to make a very small announcement. So we in Rathod Science, we came up with this mains answer rating practice course and this course it is for one year. So in this one year, we are going to have each and every topic a discussion, like each and every topic you're going to write answer for the next one year, which includes all your GSX, GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4. And on Sundays, you will be having essay or case study practice also. 
this course is very much beneficial for the beginners who have inertia to write answer and if you if you want to improve your answer writing skills yes you can join this course and the course cost is 8200 rupees for one year it is very very affordable so try to join this course as soon as possible okay so if you want to clear any doubts regarding this course you can call me on this number 8074765513 okay so if you call to this number you can directly talk to me and you can clear your doubts this is our today's hindu newspaper so date is august 20 and today is sunday so the first topic is about prime minister seeks a secure digital economy i discussed this topic and here i discussed this topic regarding raptors they are the eagle species that is white billed sea eagles and if you move on here you can see pipeline work leads to vast megalithic sites in kerala so here you have to see what is this megalith okay it will come under your ancient history part and if you move on in the states page here you can see center impose 40 percentage duty on onion exports so whenever there is increased duty on exports what happen uh, what happens so we are indirectly promoting the domestic domestic availability that means we want to decrease in decrease exports right so that we have to improve incre increase the domestic availability so that we can control the price of onion so now the price of onion is very high it is around 50 to 70 rupees per kg and here you can see with no breakthrough at india china continue dialogue on lac lap impasse so always always what happens every time so talks will be going on but nothing will be gained so this is the thing which is happening between india and china from last two and a half years and this one is karge site cag report to slam lies about udan scheme so here you have to see what is this udan scheme so this is your homework so please let me know what is udan udan is nothing but uday desh ka aam nagarik that is common man takes flight and next one is g20 countries to strengthen global health architecture i discuss this topic and i also discuss this topic regarding global initiative on digital health if you move on here you can see russian missile attacks uh, attack kills seven in ukrainian city as zelensky visits nato candidate sweden so actually this sweden is a country which recently got the membership of nato so for that only i uh, highlighted this topic and in the science page we discussed about this warming induced glacier retreat uh, could create novel ecosystems i discussed this topic and there is one article that is wolf right star is expected to produce a magneta so let me know what is the meaning of magneta which comes under science and technology and next topic is bacterial reshaping speeds of hydrocarbon breakdown so go through this article once and i discuss regarding this topic that is possible solution so these are the some important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper so i hope you enjoyed this lecture so by this i am concluding so don't forget to subscribe to rathore science academy and please do like and share the video so we are expecting only likes and the shares and comments from you okay so if you are doing that that will be encouraging for me and we are going to come up with line live as soon as possible and please give me your suggestions also so thank you so much